My father came from Japan in 1905. He was 15 when he immigrated from Japan. He, he, he worked until he was able to buy, to actually build a store. Let me tell you a story in the form of a dream. I don't know why I have to tell it, but I know what it means. Close your eyes, just picture the scene as I paint it for you. It was World War II when this man named Kenji woke up. Ken was not a soldier. He was just a man with a family who owned a store in L.A. That day, he crawled out of bed like he always did, bacon and eggs with wife and kids. He lived on the second floor of a little store he ran. He moved to L.A. from Japan. They called him immigrant. In Japanese, he'd say he was called Issei. That meant first generation in the United States when everybody was afraid of the Germans, afraid of the Japs, but most of all, afraid of a homeland attack. And that morning, when Ken went out on the doormat, his world went black, cause right there, Front page news, three weeks before 1942, Pearl Harbor's been bombed and the Japs are coming, pictures of soldiers dying and running, Ken knew what it would lead to, just like he guessed, the president said, the evil Japanese in a home country would be locked away, they gave Ken a couple of days to get his whole life packed in two bags, just two bags, couldn't even pack his clothes, some folks didn't even have a suitcase to pack anything in, so two trash bags is all it gave them, and when the kids asked mom, where are we going? Nobody even knew what to say to them Ken didn't want to lie He said the U.S. is looking for spies So we have to live in a place called Manzanar Where a lot of Japanese people are Stop it, don't look at the gunmen You don't want to get the soldiers wondering If you're gonna run or not Cause if you run then you might get shot Other than that, try not to think about it Try not to worry about it being so crowded Cause someday we'll get out Someday, someday War broke out, so the FBI came and they just come to the house and you have to come. All the Japanese have to go. They took Mr. Lee, the people couldn't understand why they had to take him because he's an innocent laborer. So now they're in a town with soldiers surrounding them. Every day, every night, look down at them. From watchtowers up on the wall, Ken couldn't really hate them at all. They were just doing the job and he wasn't gonna make any problems. He had a little garden, vegetables and fruits that he gave to the troops in a basket his wife made. But in the back of his mind, he wanted his family's life saved. Prisoners of war in their own damn country, what for? The time passed in the prison town. He wondered if he'd live it down, if and when they were free. The only way out was joining the army. And supposedly, some men went out for the army, signed on, and ended up flying to Japan with a bomb. That 15 kiloton blast put an end to the war pretty fast. Two cities were blown to bits. The end of the war came quick. And Ken got out big hopes of a normal life with his kids and his wife. But then they got back to their home and what they saw made him feel so alone. These people had trashed every room, smashed in the windows and bashed in the doors. Written on the walls and the floor, Jap's not welcome anymore. And Kenji dropped both of his bags at his sides and just stood outside. He looked at his wife without words to say she looked back at him wiping tears away and said someday we'll be okay someday now the names have been changed but the story's true my family was locked up back in 42 my family was there where it was dark and damp and they called it an internment camp when we first got back from camp uh, it was pretty pretty bad i i remember my husband said are we gonna stay till last then my husband died before they closed the camp <laughs>